So we're here at Computex, and uh, what was the announcement today? So uh, I should hand over to Gary because they're the pioneers and the leaders that uh, announced an ARM-based system today. Yeah, we, um, today the MyTech Incorporated, uh, MyTech International Incorporated, we announced the first of a range of ARM-based servers. Um, today we announced the GFX server, which is a 64-core, um, quad, 64-quad-core processor machine, um, which we think is targeted primarily at general-purpose server. Um, for email, for web hosting, web browsing, social media, video streaming. It's the general workhorse type um, marketplace. So, uh, why are you working together? Well, um, we've been talking for a while and um, we think ARM has a place, the ARM technology has a place in service. And we think it's based on power uh, advantages. Really, we see these new workloads like the one Gary was talking about. It's not really compute intensive. So we think it fits to a more modest compute and balancing networking and storage to that compute. Um, and then finally, it's about the ARM business model. Um, Gary, we hope, is going to have a choice of many devices, which is going to allow him to build different types of servers. Um, it's 32-bit today, and hopefully uh, you work with us and continue going, and you'll see a path to 64-bit at some time. Yes. Yeah. So how did you, how did you work? Uh, how did you uh, support this project? Good question. I, I think the number of people involved, and in, um, you know, the silicon partner in this box today is Marvell. So this is that's the quad core device that uh, Gary's talking about. Canonical uh, and the demonstration we showed today was running Canonical Zubuntu, the 12.04 release, and um, we showed a number of software stacks on top of that. So it's really been a combination of four companies, I would say, coming yes. together. Um, and ARM, to be honest, has taken a little bit of a backseat. Um, we've supported the architecture, um, but it's really been down to the hard work of Gary's team to do the system architecture work, Canonical with the software development work, and, and uh, Marvell helping you with the, the board level debug and uh, bring up. Yes, is that that's fair? correct. I mean, we, need, we had, a, or I had a design concept several years ago, but no silicon. Um, Hooking up with Ian and with Arm allowed me to find those partners that I needed to get the silicon, to get it into a system, to create the box. Um, and the result of that was what you saw today. And when you say there was no silicon, what you were looking for, I think, was more integrated yes, solution. more integrated, lower power, power cost-optimized for the, the type of market that I was looking for, so I could get the density. So, you know, we've tried to build a system that gives you a TCO option that's actually viable rather than um, an all-encompassing system that has overwork uh, of CPUs that you're underutilized we've given you a system that you what you get is what you want so uh, how did you come up with that architecture and uh, why did you do this it was one of those early morning shower moments <laughs> wow it, it just went Hey, um, why don't I do this? <laughs> and that was it, literally. Um, as I say, it was several years, eight years ago, to be precise, that I came up with the idea, and I just started looking at different ways of putting a system architecture together and basically cutting it up. And how do I do it? And then yeah, it kind of took a back seat, and I thought, well, okay, it's. The silicon's not there, it's too high power or it's too costly or it's not optimized to what I want. I don't want, if I'm doing web hosting or if I'm just doing email, do I really need graphics drivers in there? I don't know VGA in there, it's a server. So web hosting, email, it sounds like a web lot of hosting, the web. Yeah, it's, it's stuff where you've got high throughput, high I.O. throughput, but at low cost and low power. And that box you announced today has a lot of storage. I, I, I said in my speech today that I didn't think that the 500 people that turned up would have expected to see an ARM-based platform that could support 18.75 terabytes of memory um, in a disk, right, in, this, in the storage yes. base. I mean, it's just, uh, I think it's amazing to see how ARM is, is growing up into this space. And is it early? Yes. And, uh, but I think what Gary and MyTech are doing is indicative of what ARM is about. It's about innovation. and. 
hopefully we'll find better devices, more choice, yep. and that will allow this crazy man at five in the morning when he's having other showers to think of other crazy <laughs> ideas. Yeah. So, so how, how big do you think uh, ARM servers are going to be? How many are we talking about? How soon? It, um, there's been several announces over the last six, seven months about different ARM platforms uh, or ARM-based platforms. Um, there has to be a market out there. The likes of HP and Dell don't jump after this type of thing if there isn't a market. Um, they beat us to the announce. <laughs> it was unfortunate, but they beat us to it. But we're here. But you showed, We've you got, showed a working system. We showed so. a real working system. What was it that, that was turned on? During the whole speech, there was a device turned on the whole time. That exactly. was the server. That's like a fi kind of like final one? That is the server. That is the GFX server. That How was many actually servers sitting there? there. How many chips? There were 64 nodes. What you actually saw on that screen, we were only exercising three nodes. So you saw the traffic there just on three nodes. And what we've found so far is that we actually cannot generate enough traffic to work it properly. We can't force it to actually fall over because we can't generate enough traffic. <clears throat> so we're actually seeing m enormous throughput on the I.O. Right? That was... That machine running with just one activated I.O. port. And I, I think this is the key thing. Uh, I've, I've written a couple of blogs that seeing is believing. And, and I think once people actually start playing with the device, uh, with the platform, I'm sorry, and actually run real software and see that it runs okay, I think that's going to your earlier point about um, building a marketplace. You've got to try before you buy here. It is a different architecture. It's different from x86. Um, but once people can start playing with hardware platforms, they're going to, I think, start to feel more comfortable in the workloads that's running yes. and seeing that, oh, actually my storage system is running a, with a good balance of I.O. to memory to CPU. Uh, and that's where we're going. And, and I, I think the bit that, for me, Intel is missing is, and in the presentation after me, they still talked about Atom being 6 watts. And yeah, if you don't want to actually put any of the I.O. alongside it, right? There's no gigabit Ethernet that adds cost and footprint and power. There's no SATA on chip, etc., etc. So really, I think we're at a point where you're going to be able to compare at a system level, apples to apples, how does my software run compared to how it runs on incumbent platforms, and then let the market decide. So you were talking web server, you were talking email, what kind of things are going to run? Anything. Anything that you, any WebEx type service that you can run. We've had what you didn't see there in the presentation because we, there was very limited time. But if anybody wants to come and actually see the real demos at the Arm Suite at the Hyatt or at the Canonical booth down in Nangang, um, they will actually see it running WordPress. You'll see it running PHP. We've got chat rooms going. Um, we've got loads. Of, there, there is just an infinite number or. or in, yeah, an infinite number of stuff that we can actually run on there that we've just played with. How fast is WordPress? As fast as it can be? Uh, All these apps. I don't know. How do you benchmark WordPress? I, I, mean, I, I mean, it's what you, what you saw today, control. what you saw today, there behind that um, demonstration, logstalgia demonstration, um, was WordPress was running. We had PHP running. We had our corporate website running. Um, we had a chat room running. There were several other applications running behind there. That was all running on just three nodes. What you saw there was just three of the 64 nodes. And the, the page load times is going to be like instant or how does it work? The page load times, literally, you saw on the screen in the background there were web pages scrolling. They were running on the same node. It literally just don't, don't, don't. It, it scrolls very, very fast. C could you talk a little bit about the kind of interest that you're getting about this category? Well, I think there's a lot of interest. And I think we're at a stage where now that interest is converting to now I can actually do something with a real hardware to see is my interest, or is my workload going to run well? Is it going to be run brilliantly or is it not going to run well for this uh, particular platform? Um, so I think we're at that point moving from PowerPoint to real systems through companies like MyTag that have been 
thought leaders and pioneers into this into this space. And certainly, there's interest for all the applications that Gary talked about. All sorts of storage um, subsystems where the CPU is being utilized. I don't know. I hear it's between two and ten percent for a, yeah. a dual socket quad core Xeon for a storage server. Why have two very expensive cores there? We think there's great opportunity. And I think through what MyTech's doing, people are going to be able to play and, and see for their workload, does it run well, does it not run, and, and then we'll learn from there. Uh, are we talking about 100% of all servers, or what are we talking about? How many percent? No, 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 no. How no. many percent? I mean, 95. There is... 95? <laughs> really? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, we look, we're looking at um, an area of the market but, um, that has a particular requirement. Um, we have, I have one particular interested party um, where they have said that their typical system is a 1U dual processor, Xeon 5, they're using 15%, but it's costing them 80% of the power just to get the throughput. Now, we've designed a system where we've, in 1U, you can have 16 cores, or sorry, 16 cores, 16 nodes. Right. All of them are quad core, all right, and we can do the whole thing: 64 um, nodes with up to 16 gigabyte of memory per node, with up to 18.75 terabytes of disk, with 16 10 gigabit Ethernet ports, and it's all sub 1,000 watts. Yeah, different power envelope from what ARM has been used to, but I, I think incredible amount of power. Yeah, uh, it's sub 1,000 watts. What kind of prices are we talking about? Prices I can't really get into. Yeah. Um, we have done some rough pricing, um, and prices are available. We do have numbers that I can't, can't give you that on video, um, but prices are available from our marketing department. One thing I can tell you is that there are some figures about that state that it's, there is a that we're about one third of the cost per node of a typical x86. One third? Is that one third. Is that also what you pitch or what you talk about? One third? <laughs> what, do you talk, what, um, what do you talk about? It's, talk it's about very price? workload specific. Um, I, 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 like Gary, um, don't talk about pricing. And I think until, until people run real workloads and do their performance per what per dollar analysis for them. Um, but yes, I, I've seen a five to one advantage for some things. Um, some of the early work that HP was talking about was in a similar ballpark. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, so I think it's somewhere there. The bottom line is nobody's going to move for a 10% advantage or a 15. It's got to be a significant leap. Intel aren't staying stationary. They're, they're clearly getting better, right? I mean, they're starting to do some better, better devices, but ARM is not standing still either. I mean, the A15 is much higher performance than the A9 class of product that's in uh, the box today. Yeah. So, so we're not staying stationary. Um, we're going to see more integration. There's much more integration on the Marvell device than the Centerton device. There's much more integration on Calzada than the Centerton device. So more performance and integration is key. Are we going to run every legacy enterprise server application? No. Actually, quite a bit of enterprise is now starting to move to Java and workloads like that, mm -hmm. so Java is key. Um, but yeah, we've estimated that this market is 20 to 25% of the marketplace overall. It's the fastest growing area. Um, these people will move for something that offers a performance per watt per dollar advantage, and we'll learn from there. Um, so certainly not 100%. My 95 might be on the high side, um, but certainly we think a quarter of the market in a few years' time, absolutely, is, we can go after that. But to get to 95, you need high performance. How high performance okay. are you going to get? MyTech aren't standing still on this either. The GFX server that we announced today is only the basic platform. It, it contains an ASX module, which is our general compute module. That's the 64 quad-core processors. We're already developing GPGPU capabilities on the A9. We're also partnering with other silicon vendors for A15 V8 64-bit technology as well. And they will all fit into that same space envelope. There is a back end there which is the GFX. That is where all of our ASX modules will plug into, whether they are high performance 
whether they are 64-bit, whether they are 64-bit with high performance, they will all plug into that same envelope. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, there's, there's really no, the limitation is not on performance. It's going to be on legacy software and companies feeling comfortable about migrating. There's a lot of x86 server software out there, you know, SAP, CR, you know, legacy CRM systems, Oracle databases, Microsoft server, Exchange server and things. There's a lot of legacy code out there. That's not going to port overnight. So when I talk about 20-25%, I'm talking about open source software on Linux and we think that's a very good place to go. It's going to take longer for higher reliability systems, other operating systems, etc, etc. And there's going to be some areas where that legacy code just, I think people just aren't going to move. But overall in businesses, we're seeing people moving from laptops to tablets. You've probably seen, I had some of those discussions where people are replacing laptops with tablets because they need, that's the right level of performance on the client. I think we're seeing the same thing in the servers, like Gary describes, why spend a lot more money when your CPU is 15% utilized? Right sizing your server, right sizing your client, and we'll see where we go from there. Does this platform enable totally new things that are not possible in current servers? Can you imagine that this is the only way that you something... Can get, you can get the density and the performance you always dreamed of, and you can do it in one rack without exceeding that rack's power envelope. And that's where it's, it really hits um, the real estate issues that some of the data centers have got. This is a system that's only 16 inches deep. So even just putting it down on the ground, it takes up less space than a conventional x86 server. So, so it also means that we're getting bigger supercomputer clusters, or what does it mean? Um, from the general purpose server that we've learned, announced today, no, you're not, you're not going to talk supercomputer. There's no reason why when we start adding co-processing, when we introduce Big Little, all right, with because that's something else that we need to go with um, with ARM is the Big Little platforms. Why not? We could be talking clustering very large amounts of compute nodes in very small spaces. I, and the other thing I think of, and this is the sort of Ian Ian Ferguson wacky stuff, is. You know, if you look at integration and if you look at where smartphones are being deployed now, a lot of things are being deployed in, in developing countries where power is very limited um, or, and very unreliable and um, people can't afford that sort of conventional server there. I personally am on a mission to look at us, uh, how do we build really cheap servers that allow the scale out of smartphones in Bangladesh on you know other services across Africa where these people are using smartphones to work out where they're going to go sell their fish in ports. A lot of interesting things. They're not using real horsepower and they're not downloading and watching TV. But basic web servicing, how do servers in those emerging countries um, look? And they've got to be fitting in a very tight power envelope and a very tight cost envelope. How do you do that? Choice of silicon and highly integrated things. That's completely the other end of the spectrum probably not a space that you're looking at right now, but I think it's your point about new markets. How does ARM stuff go and drive into really low cost? Think of it as the Raspberry Pi into the server area. What I mean, does I that was just low thinking server... the same thing. <laughs> what, does that, what does the ARM business model do so you have a Raspberry Pi type of thing in the server space? That's what I'm personally on a mission for. and That's for another day in terms of more details, but I think that's to your point. That's what it, I don't think you can get there with the, the Intel approach and that will open up new opportunities.